Let's talk about Adobe. Today you are going to find a series of updates that I believe are the most significant software updates they've done for digital photography in the last 10 years because these all hinge around a brand new raw calibration profile. What is that? What does that mean? Well, if you use Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Lightroom and you shoot in RAW, you are using a calibration profile that is almost 10 years old now. And so this is a massive update and this is a really big deal. And I've been using the beta version of Lightroom Classic now for about a week and it does look fantastic. So what is a calibration profile and why is that important and why would that make a massive difference in how your images look? Well, if you shoot RAW, unlike JPEG, you are writing a file to the SD card that just contains raw image data. You can't see a raw file. A JPEG you can open in a host of applications and it has all the information that that application needs to render the file. But raw is a little bit different because if you're using Lightroom, if you're using Capture One, there's a lot of options that you have now. They all have a calibration profile, which is your starting point. So when you bring an image into your editor of choice, it uses that calibration profile to render the image. Now, a couple weeks ago, I did a video and I was comparing Lightroom to Capture One. And what I was doing is I was showing how that worked. And if you haven't seen the video, I'll link it up at the end of this one if you're interested. And so what it is, I took one image, which is this image you're looking at now. This is of a pumpkin. And it was just, just to show you what your starting point is when you bring your image in. So no edits have been applied. And in the previous video that I did, they were drastically different when I compared Capture One to Lightroom. The Lightroom version, because it was an old color calibration profile, had a magenta cast to it, it had some funky stuff going on with the white balance and the color. And when you think about it, over the last 10 years, a lot has changed in terms of digital photography, sensor technology. And so this is a really awesome step in the right direction. And after I did that video, actually somebody from Adobe reached out to me and they said, we'd like to bring you into the loop and talk about some stuff we've been working on. So I've talked to them about it. I've talked to one of the engineers over there and asked a bunch of questions. And I'm really excited about this. And of course, what you're going to see uh, in terms of the marketing around it is a whole bunch of options for presets and stuff. But the, what's really important is this raw file. And Adobe actually say there are six new ones. And while that is true, they are basically variations around the base one, which is now known as Adobe Color. And I'm going to be working in Lightroom Classic right now, but this does apply to any Adobe application that will read a raw image. So Photoshop, for instance, uh, Lightroom Classic, Lightroom CC, Lightroom Mobile, so on and so forth. So this is what we're looking at. Now I'm working in Lightroom Classic, and I'm gonna show you how this plays into the interface. Now they have moved the calibration profile up to the top of the palette here, and it used to be at the bottom, and this is a much better place to be because this is your starting point. Your workflow will hinge around this. Now, I brought this image in just before I started making this video, and it defaulted into the new calibration profile, which is Adobe Color. If you have a library of images in Lightroom, it will not disturb what you've already done. It will render those as they are because that's important. If you've done client work, if all of a sudden they apply a new calibration profile under the edits that you've made, it's gonna change the look completely. So it does not do that. You can go in and manually update them to the new profile. And if you don't like the new profile, you can also roll back and we'll talk about that a little bit too. And so let me talk about the interface for a little bit. If we're in Adobe uh, Lightroom right now, let me move images. This is uh, one of the images I shot uh, at the Sony event in Vegas. And by the way, this was on an A7 III. So if you own an A7 III and you're lucky enough to already have one, this will read your raw files, which is very cool. So if I go over to the top of this palette here and I, under profile, I brought this in, it's Adobe Color, defaulted into that. And if I click on this little grid, it's gonna give you more options here. And at the top, you can say favorites. Right underneath that are all of the raw profiles. And I mentioned they are kind of sort of theme and variation on Adobe Color. And as I mouse over these, it's going to give me a preview uh, without making any changes as to what it's going to make the image look like. And this is a really cool way to start. And obviously these variations on Adobe Color are pretty obvious. There's a landscape, there's a neutral, They much like what you'd find in camera profiles, a portrait, a standard, and then there's a vivid also. So if for some reason you want to bring out skin tones uh, to be kind of a little more natural looking, you would choose portrait. And you, but I love the way you can roll your mouse over these and just get an instant preview. Preview. Now, before we move on, I want to say one other thing about this, because when I talk to the engineer about it, um, one thing that's really important is they are now behind the scenes. They're kind of unifying the profile across different makes and models of cameras. So let's say, for instance, that you shoot weddings and you shoot a Canon and your assistant shows up and they've got an icon. Well, those are going to look drastically different with the old camera profile and you're going to have a lot of matching to do in terms of color. Now with Adobe Color, this is much more camera agnostic, much like Capture One has 
been, this is really important for a number of reasons, not only the example I just gave you, but if you also think about third-party presets that you might use with Lightroom, and I'll give you a great example, is the Visco presets. And Visco makes some incredibly awesome film simulations, and I have purchased those before, and you can get, you know, your old Tri-X look, you can get the Agfa color looks, you can get Kodak color looks, and they're really pretty awesome, And but when you install them into Lightroom in presets, they will create folders that you can install and they're all based on camera models. So for instance, you have a folder of presets for Canon. You have the exact same presets, but they're calibrated for Sony. The exact same presets, they're calibrated for Nikon. And so this eliminates the need to create presets for every camera model. So this is a really big deal. Now, if we go back over to the interface, Adobe have already included some new presets in here. So if you continue to scroll down, you're going to see, uh, first of all, you're going to see your legacy presets. So if you do want to roll back and for some reason you don't like uh, what you're seeing with Adobe Color, you can roll back to the old ones. So that's under legacy. But then underneath that, you have a series, and I believe there's 40 of them in here. Uh, you have your artistic presets. And again, these are starting points. So these are variations of presets that are added on top of Adobe Color. And when I roll the mouse over these, I get kind of a preview for each one of them. And I, I really love the way they have incorporated this into the interface. And once you select one, let's say we want to go with modern, I just go ahead and click it. We're good. And I can close the grid up at the top. And then I can go on and I can make further adjustments. What all of this is about is it's about getting you to a starting point that is more in line with what you as a photographer envision as the final image. This is something that's really important to me. As much as I like film presets, um, I've kind of gotten to the point now where I have something in mind of the way I want an image to look and be interpreted. And so I'm more into using sliders and going in and actually learning how to use the software to achieve that. But even if you're like me in that regard, this is a faster way to get to a starting point is what it is. And then you apply your edits on top of this. And that's what it's about. It's about spending less time editing and more time getting the image to look the way that you want it to do. And so I know everybody's different. And I want to add this too that much like Capture One, and when I spoke with the engineer at Capture One, um, we talked about this. Um, and this is important. When you bring a RAW file in, it's interpreted. That profile is kind of based on current trends and what our visual vocabulary as photographers, what we're used to seeing. And so a lot of people have made the comment with Capture One, and I'm sure you're going to hear this about Adobe Color as well, is that it brings things in a little bit sharp, a little bit contrasty, and a little bit saturated. Not everybody likes to work that way, and that is true. And one of the things that, when I was talking to Capture One, that, that we were, uh, Doug made the point of, is that with sliders, zero does not mean zero. So if your contrast is set at zero, that interpretation off of the calibration profile is probably a little hotter than zero. And so that's a really important thing to remember. And again, what you're going off of is what you visually want to interpret. So I think a lot of people are really going to embrace Camera Raw and they're going to, or excuse me, Adobe Color, and they're going to love it. I hope they embrace Camera Raw. We've had that for a while. Adobe Color, the interpretation. Um, I think they're going to embrace it. I think they're going to love it. There's going to be another crew that does not like change. And what Adobe have done is they've allowed the flexibility. So if you want to do that, you don't have to use it. You can use the legacy versions as well. Although personally, that was the beef I had with the with the legacy version of uh, the calibration profile that Adobe were using is that it was just it had problems. It's just too old. And so I'm really excited to see Adobe move in this direction. And I would love to hear what you guys think as well. Go update your software, check this out, try it, and let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, we'll talk about this some more in the coming weeks. And uh, I'm really excited about this because I've been talking a lot about Capture One, and what excites me the most about the time we're living in now is that we have options and that there's competition. And the competition is actually good for everybody, including Adobe. And I am, I've am i used Lightroom for a long time. Believe me, I have the whole master collection of the Creative Cloud, so I pay my Adobe tax every year. I want to see Adobe be awesome. I want to see them succeed. And what's great is that you have options. If Capture One is more suited for you or something else, you've got that. If a Lightroom is more suited for you, what they're doing is they're updating it and they're making it competitive. And that's a big deal. So I would like to know what you guys think. More on this in the future. Until the next video, see you guys then. Later.